Sri Lanka, a tropical paradise. Blessed with a unique range of animal species and a human population of 20 million, it's battling to coexist with the country's top predator, the leopard. There are casualties on both sides. Back in the 1920s, in the village of Punani, a leopard killed over 20 people. A hunter was summoned, but the leopard was elusive. To date, it's Sri Lanka's first known man-eater and an early sign of a simmering conflict. The then minister wanted me to do research on five events that brought Sri Lanka's wildlife into the world limelight. The main one being the man-eating leopard of Punani. This was the first experience that the Sri Lankans had at that time with an animal of this nature. Now, with human encroachment and overcrowded national parks, the leopard's domain is shrinking. Both sides are competing for the same space. A human-leopard conflict has begun. In the Indian epic, Ramania, Lord Rama was said to have built a bridge connecting India and Sri Lanka with the help of an ape army. Whether man-made or natural, using this former land connection, known as Adam's Bridge, animals crossed over to Sri Lanka from India. Leopards also made the crossing, ultimately becoming its top carnivore. Later, after the reign of Sinhalese kings, Sri Lanka came under colonial rule. With the following expansion, forests diminished. Virgin jungles were cut down to make way for vast plantations. It was during this era the leopard of Punani struck. <laughs> Its first victim was a small moor boy overseeing a herd of cattle. A man-eater was on the loose. I went to Punani and I spent some time there, but one of the main problems that I had in doing that research was very few people in that area knew about this leopard. Even at that time, in 86, there was hardly a, a community living there. In the 1920s, it must have been real wild country. There was nobody really living there except the railway community and some of the jungle people. Some of them are doing chena cultivations, uh, some of them hunter-gatherers. But I think it changed very rapidly to an urban environment where today, uh, or even in the 1950s, one could hardly imagine how a man-eating leopard operated there. The Sri Lankan leopard is one of nine recognized subspecies of leopard and is the country's apex predator. As the largest carnivore in the country, it determines the number of prey species, such as spotted deer, wild boar, and sambar. The local leopards are larger in comparison to their relatives elsewhere. They have supple, elongated bodies, and as characteristic to this species, their rusty yellow coat is peppered with black spots. Before colonial rule, these majestic cats roamed all over the island. But during British rule, major land reformations were made. Agriculture was encouraged, including the production of coffee. As the result, rail was introduced to transport coffee from the hill country to the port of Colombo. Later, coffee was replaced by tea plantations. 
Though there was little economic justification to lay a line to the east of the country, it was considered strategically worthy to lay a line to the harbour of Trimcomaly and also to the provincial capital of Batikaloa, where Punani was located. By 1921, plans were made to extend the batakaloa trimcomaly railway line. The unwary construction workers were easy prey for the man-eater. Fearing the man-eater, several workers agreed to take a safety precaution by riding together in the last cart with the remaining individual keeping watch behind. The attempt was a failure. The villager on foot was swiftly dragged away into the forest by the leopard and killed, which begged the question, why was this leopard targeting humans? There was hardly any reason as to why this leopard became a man-eater. And very interesting fact that this leopard, most of his kills were made on the 28 mile post on the Polonaroa road means that he was very familiar with people walking along that road and he got used to ambushing people on that stretch of road. Today, the Polonaruwa Punani Road is relatively busy with traffic. Domestic herds of cattle are a common sight near roadside, just as it was back in the 1920s. For a period of six months in 1924, this stretch of road, especially the area between Bonani and the Vakanani turnoff, was the hunting ground of the man-eater. The killings generally happened between the 28th and the 31st milestones. Sometimes months would pass without an attack, then suddenly the leopard would strike continuously. Its exact number of victims will never be known. Leopards are found in various habitats throughout the island. Unlike its continental brethren, the local leopards are less arboreal and have diurnal habits. Leopards are found mostly in the dry lowlands. Normally nocturnal, these clever cats prefer to hunt under the cover of darkness. Opportunistic hunters, they won't pass on easy prey. Similarly, the Panani leopard must have stalked its victims in the dead of night. Where an animal lives, or even its personality signifies its adaptations to the problem of sustenance. The elephant, a herbivore, spends most of its time consuming around 300 pounds of food per day. The leopard, a carnivore, needs to work harder for its food, but doesn't eat as frequently. A good kill will satisfy the leopard for several days sometimes even weeks, which explains the periodic absence of attacks by this man-eater. Humans, because they are relatively slow and less alert than its normal prey, were ideal fodder. Generally, leopard attacks on humans are considered rare. Most are reported from the Indian subcontinent. During the British Raj in India, animals were killed for sport. Tigers were largely hunted by colonialists and the elite. 
With no tigers or lions in Sri Lanka, leopards became a target of trophy hunters. Interestingly, former hunter and later conservationist Jim Corbett hunted the man-eating leopard of Raja Prayang in India around the same time the Unani leopard was active. Corbett further stated that when a tiger becomes a man-eater, it loses all fear of man. But a leopard, even after it's killed scores of humans, never loses its fear of man. So, how did the leopard of Punani become bold enough to attack people? Some communities in that period, they, they didn't bury their dead or they didn't cremate their dead. They just went and made the last rites and kept the body in the jungle. And most probably this leopard had eaten and got a taste of human flesh. And uh, also at the same time, uh, when he first really killed the first human being, he must have thought to himself, well, this is easy prey. In the wild, leopards are solitary hunters. They don't hunt in packs and will generally hunt in one of two ways. Either it will ambush prey or, as seen here, it will stalk its victim. Similarly, instead of animals, the Panani leopard targeted humans. As the killings of Panani escalated, the government agent sent a telegram to renowned hunter Shelton Agar, denoting a bounty for a man-eating leopard. When I was in the tea trade, I used to visit some of the estates, and some of the older planters knew Sheraton. He was uh, supposed to be, have been a, a perfect gentleman, and also a, a very good shot, and uh, he was a very good planter also at the same time. Agar, confident of his hunting skills, accepted the challenge and traveled 175 miles before reaching his destination. Once Shelton Agar started hunting him, the last victim was Manikkam. But before that, uh, nobody knew about the leopard. They knew that people were getting uh, killed, uh, but the local people didn't pay very much attention until some of the railway workers went missing. And then all turned off, who was the railway inspector. He's the one who first got the leopard gasseted. Now, Alton Dorf, who was an educated man and a railway inspector, he, said he identified the seriousness of it. You know, this must have been happening so many times. People were losing and uh, there was nothing happening. Uh, but then he's the one who actually uh, managed to get uh, Shelton Agar to come. Generally, humans are not the food of Sri Lankan leopards. In fact, the local leopards are blessed with a variety of prey. they face few challenges in the wild. Probably the only time leopards are vulnerable are when they are cubs. Growing up, cubs stick with their mother and siblings for more than a year. The leopard's only real threat is from humans. Leopards were killed with impunity until 1964. Now it's fully protected under the Fauna and Flora Protection Ordinance. Leopards are also targeted for their skin and other body parts, which are of great value in the black market. Today, most leopards in Sri Lanka are found within the boundaries of national parks. Located down south, Yala National Park has one of the highest leopard densities. Local farmers nearby, like Gamini, face a unique problem from leopards who often venture outside the park in search of food. Gamini's livestock consists mostly of cattle. The younger calves are often targeted by leopards. Every evening, Gamini would gather the herd and bathe them. Afterwards, he would rely on the assistance of specially constructed steel pens for security. 
The calves are then driven into these enclosures and locked until dawn. The leopards are unable to break in, hence the calves are well secure. But before this method was implemented, they were easy prey. Apatame gal lebena ta kaliyeng goda kar darati buna sahin vidhi ta kar darati buna kotiya villa apy balag niddi apy petau bandhu puya varagina kano gate taking varagina kano apate lo ganna apatat bayai apy gini kotoling kano sir e han nitne apy eliye vetna kano nida ganne nida gatto tapy me apy poli katya te kapy me jiva te liure me wapita te kumarano. At night, Gamini would set up a fire near the pen. The resulting heat serves a dual purpose of warding off mosquitoes and leopards. Kick marla tari na maruo tu me 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 gali petau attack ino atom marano. Ke dawasa gata petau pas hai dina kala marla daapu ila walti ino. Neta api udhe ta villa api anda pu ila walti ino mati. Balno koto apu tau te gali marla. Apu te ita pagun tu te te apu te ita pas jiwa tin vidya kine. Saya hinna apu te kar dari aku na gudak vidya te me gali lebin te kali. දැන් අපි ගෙදර ගිහිල්ලා නිදා ගන්න මේ ගාල් ලැබුණට පස්සේ the cattle pens are a win-win situation for both farmers and leopards since the calves are well protected there have been few dead livestock hence revenge killings of leopards significantly reduce in the area but there's another lingering issue if you travel between tisamaharam and kathargama uh, say 15 years ago, there were a lot of jungles on the left-hand side going up the slope. There were hardly any shops or boutiques or eating houses or some, any, anything like that. But now, if you travel that same road, you will find that all that environment has been reduced and shops have come up, flower shops, eating houses, petrol sheds. It's a very commercial road today. And all the lepers that have been living in that surrounding area have now come as refuge to the Yala National Park. Coming into leopard conservation, I wonder how many leopards can the Yala National Park sustain? The surge of leopards in Yala and urbanization may explain certain past attacks in the region. Of particular note is a leopard that targeted pilgrims back in the 1950s during the annual walk known as the Pada Yatra. The pilgrims start their journey up north in Jaffna, continuing down south to Kataragama. In order to reach Kataragama, the pilgrims have to cross both Kumana and Yala National Parks. There was another man-eater in uh, Sri Lanka, somewhere near Yala. There is a pilgrim route that comes from uh, Batiklo, that comes from Potuvil, like that, all to come to the Kataragama Shrine. It's called the Pade Atra. Every year, the killings kept on going along this pilgrim route. And this is only during one, uh, two months of a year that uh, this happened. But anyway, the uh, camp moved from Potthana to Udupottana, and then the, the killings stopped. And nothing was heard of that leopard after that. But the damage done by this man-eater was nowhere near the atrocity committed by the Punani leopard, who kept eluding Agar constantly. Agar <laughs> tirelessly scouted the road up and down, hoping to catch a glimpse of the killer leopard. After several unsuccessful attempts, he hit gold, finding not one, but several leopards on the road. On impulse, he opened fire, killing both leopards on different turns. But the true man-eater was elsewhere. It is very wrong, right, the hunting method, but then Shelton Eger himself uh, says that he had never hunted leopards before and that the stories that he had heard about the killing of this leopard, he himself says, I couldn't believe that one animal was responsible for such a devastation. When he saw this group, he obviously surmised these leopards who also would have been responsible for some of the killings and that's what he did that. But then uh, subsequently he deeply regretted what he had done. Agar tried various methods to lure the man-eater, one of which included the use of 
live bait. A goat was tied up near the rotting body of the latest victim, but the goat never bleated out of fright, and the elusive leopard never showed up. When uh, Sheridan Ega took up to hunting this leopard, the leopard didn't kill any further human beings once Sheridan Ega started hunting him. And he went up and down the road. Ultimately, he thought this was a dead duck. And he went back to the estate. And then, a few months later, that he got a letter from Altendorf asking him to come. Uh, that was the death of Manikam, the last victim. Manikam, the village postman, was out delivering mail, but stubbornly used the road hunted by the man-eater when he was told not to. Around the 28th mile post, he paid the ultimate price. The man-eater struck again, but this would be its last kill. When you go and live with these jungle wedding folk, they have a completely different mentality from people coming from our background. But the jungle dwelling folk are people who take a lot of things for granted. You know, if they find uh, three people going out to the jungle and man, they come back and say, uh, we don't know what happened to the other guy, he went away and he never came back sort of business. For them, it was something <laughs> second nature. This tolerant attitude can be attributed to Sri Lanka's benevolent face. Most belief exposed compassion to all beings, including the country's major religion, Buddhism. The landscape is dotted with numerous Buddhist shrines, some of which are centuries old. As with all deeply religious cultures, strong contradictions emerge. For instance, how can a man-eating leopard be tolerated? Nowadays, troublesome leopards are captured and translocated. If captured when young, like this orphan leopard cub, the chances of it being released into the wild and surviving are slim. Instead, it will get used to humans, become a larger version of a domestic cat. But if caught, an adult man-eating leopard will never be free again. It will be incarcerated for life. This leopard, named as Namali, attacked and killed a village woman back in 2014. It was captured and brought to the zoo by wildlife officials. During the process, the leopard lost its front canines. <laughs> Its aggressiveness and impairment are red flags and present a dilemma. Can this leopard be released back into the wild? What will happen if a confirmed man killer is set loose? The leopard is also blind in one eye further diminishing its hunting prowess. Releasing this leopard now will be dangerous. It will spend its lifetime in this zoo. Unfortunately, back in the 1920s, Agar only had one way to stop the man-eater. After Agar returned to Panani, he ordered a track to be cut from the 28th mile post to the location of Manikam's body in the jungle. He calculated that the distance back to Panani was 12 miles. When Agar and his helpers discovered Manikam's body, it was partially eaten by the leopard. Immediately, he ordered a platform to be built above the ground, overlooking the corpse. He managed to identify the carcass, and the carcass was so fresh that he had managed to stay over the carcass. The previous ones, they never found the carcass, or the carcass was so badly uh, ravaged that there was nothing for him to sit and uh, wait. With night falling fast, the group decided to head back to Panani. Suddenly, 
the leopard returned. Agar fired, but the elusive cat escaped again. What was special about the Panani man-eater? Based on hearsay, one would assume it was a large leopard. Some even believed it was a ghost. But the reality was different. It had been a fairly exceptionally small leopard. There were no salient features to identify why he became a man-eater. His teeth were in very good condition. His uh, body was in very good condition. Perhaps, according to my experience also, most probably, he, he just acquired a taste for human flesh. In his gripping account of the man-eater, Agar claimed that the body of the killer leopard was not large, yet showed abnormal development in its feet pads, neck muscles, and head. It also had large canine teeth. It was evident that Agar was facing a formidable foe. After Agar returned to Panani for the night, the leopard did something exceptionally bold. It returned to the site of Manikam's body. When Agar and his group returned to the jungle, the body was gone. But following the drag marks, they managed to find the corpse again. Agar built another platform near the new location of the latest victim. He then sent his helpers back to get provisions and spent an agonizing day alone in the jungle. Later, he vividly described the experience. A feeling of loneliness overcame me. I once again began to calculate time. There was only one way for the leopard to gain his kill, and that was to pass my rifle. He would have to do for me first. But Agar waited and waited. The leopard never showed up. After Agar's helpers returned to the location, he settled down on the platform with his driver and sent the others back. It began to rain towards the evening. Around 3 p.m., as Agar was sipping his tea, he casually glanced over his shoulder and was shocked to see the man-eater staring up at him. The dreaded leopard was sitting on its haunches, licking its paws like a cat. Agar quickly took aim. The leopard was yards away from the body, but it kept looking up at him. He opened fire, getting the leopard with a neck shot and finally ending its reign of terror on the 18th of August, 1924. After he shot the man-eating leopard, he thought of the country and gave the skin to the museum, where it is still mounted and lying. Times have changed since colonial times. New problems have risen. With a land area of just 650,000 square kilometers, Sri Lanka has over 20 million people. Even though the country has over 25 national parks, some of them are overcrowded by visitors. The resulting congestion greatly stresses the animals. Due to their charismatic and shy nature, leopards are the star attraction in these parks. Tourists and locals alike eagerly attempt to catch a glimpse of this top cat. But with limited prey and dwindling space, the felines seek territories outside the park, venturing into human habitations. Because of this location shift, they rely on fringe prey like domestic cattle. Though cattle pens reduce the problem, its upkeep is a challenge for poor farmers. The options for local farmers are limited. Their skills are insufficient for other trades, and they cannot afford to relocate either. Mama Andra Gasai Padinchi, Api in the Laharaginala, Meheta Mai Vadi Gahagin, Edwasula, Padinchela, Ginimala Gahagina, Galraki. Handout Vasugal Korla Gila, Udeta Villa, Kirdoagina, 
ආපහු හවසට ඇවිල්ලා හරක් එක්ක ආවරලා ආපහු පැටව් ගාල් කරලා අපි ඒ විදිහට තමයි හැමදාම මේක් කරන්නේ. ඉතින් අපිට එච්චර ගන්න නැහැ අපි කිරි ලීටර් 8ක් වගේ දවන්න 8 දොළ රුපියා 800ක් වගේ ගන්නේ. ඒකෙන් තමයි පොඩි කට්ටිය ගෙදර සීලුම දෙ ඉගෙන ගන්න. සීලුම දෙයට ඒ ඒ ටික තමයි වීදම් කරන්නේ. Experts believe that due to poaching there could be a lack of prey inside the parks. This could be another valid reason why the leopards target livestock. The first thing that we have to consider is the prey base. Is there enough prey for all the leopards that have come in from outside? Number two is that conflict among two big males. Uh, they may be a little more tolerant in Sri Lanka than in Africa and India because the country is so small and the environment is small, but nevertheless, there will be still a conflict. And I don't know, say, the future for leopard in Yala, for instance, I feel very sad about it. But now, farmers are well aware of a leopard's eating habits. ඒ නැතුව අතාරින්න මරලා ගිහිල්ලා ටිකක් එහාට ගිහිල්ලා බලාගෙන ඉන්නවා. ඒ සතා කන්නේ පෙනහැලි ඒ ටික පමණයි කන්නේ. අනිත් මේ ඔක්කොම කොටස කන්නේ නැහැ. අනිත් ඒවා කන්නේ වෙන සතුන්. ඉතින් බුල්ලෝ ඌරෝ කනවා. A deficient prey base, old age and injury are considered reasons as to why leopards become man eaters. Though this is not always the case. The exact origin of a man eating leopard is a mystery. Yet the real danger is not from leopards, but for the leopard. In rural areas, land is constantly cleared for agriculture. Coupled with urbanization, the leopard is gradually losing its homeland. Since territory and prey are in high competition, leopards target livestock, bringing them into direct conflict with humans. Most problematic leopards are now in the zoo. They rely on sustenance from humans and are unable to hunt and fend for themselves in the wild, where they will also face competition from other leopards. Leopards that have attacked humans, like Namali, present another problem. Caretakers are well aware of the consequences if it were to be released. නැවත වතාවක් මේ දිවියා කැලයකට නිදහස් කරොත් මගේ පුජ්‍යලික අදහසක් අපේ අදහසක් එන්නේ මේ දිවියා නැවතත් මිනිසුන්ට හුරු වෙලා මිනිසුන්ගේ ක්‍රියාකාරකම් දැකලා මිනිසුන්ගේ කටහඬට හුරු වෙලා ඒ නිසා නැවත මේ දිවියා ජනතාව වෙසෙන ඒ කියන්නේ මහ ජනතාව වෙසෙන ජනාවාස වාස භූමි කරා පෙමිනිමේ වැඩි සම්බන්ධතාවක් තියෙනවා කියලා අපි මගේ අදහසක් වශයෙන් ප්‍රකාශ කරන්න පුළුවන් Sadly Nomali's offspring face a similar fate her laid back behavior is a stark contrast to her mother's aggressive nature she relies on food from humans too hence she is unable to hunt born and bred in a zoo she lacks instincts and skills to survive in the wild just like her mother she too will spend her lifetime in this zoo this is kumana national park located down south near yala Nalanka has been a wildlife tracker here for 7 years. On April the 18th, 2019, he witnessed an unprecedented tragedy. Chandra Mahathya avilla kiwa me athule kotiye gahala ekkenekta puluwan tarang ikmanin api yanna ona kiyala. Api hatara dena enna lasthi una enna wahanayak thibunne. Ee pase etanama wedaka kiyanne sapari karana me chamira malli avilla kiwa man ennan yan api kiyala. මෙතන ඇවිල්ලා අපි බැස්සාම කිව්වා මෙහෙට මෙතන මේ 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 වැලි ගොඩේ ඉඳගෙන හිටියා අතන අර කොර කහ පඳුර ත හේතු වෙලා හිටපු එක කන මේ පාර දිගේ අරගෙන කොටියා ගියා කියලා The worker was doing road construction and was on his lunch break when the leopard attacked The 48 year old man was killed instantly The leopard had singled him out the attack was no mistake. ඔයිට පස්සේ අපි ඔක්කොම තෙක් කැලේ ඇතුළට ගියා. කෙනෙක් ඉස්සරහට ගිහිල්ලා කිව්වා නර පළු ගහට පොඩ්ඩක් මෙහා පැත්තේ තියෙනවා මේ ලොකු හුඹහක්. එතන මේ බොඩි එක තියෙනවා කියලා. එතනට ගියාට පස්සේ කොටිය කාලා තිබුණා මේ 
मनुष्य के बागे आकमा कोटिया पेन हिटी ने इतने मामात में चमीरत इतने नीति रे उन्हा अनित कट्टिया एलियटेन ना आवा कैलिंग एलियट करने मामे इस तरह का गिहिला नेविला मालाकाने दे बिच्चे में तुवाल टिक बाला बाला हिटी चमीरा पिटुपास सेंगे दंग में पोटो देखा कर गया था तुमने नी पोटो एक गाने मामे पिटुपास सर दाला चमीरा आय इस तरह टाव में आये पोट्टा किन्ने गया इधर कोटे में एक बार इस तरह दे बिच्चे मीटर हाई कटे इधर यहाँ पे तेंग कोरा कहाँ पंद्रह कसें कोटिया नेगिटिव देखा देखा कमांग में मांग क्या क्या हुआ में कोटिया किया ला इधर एक तेक कम चमीरा गैंग कटे पैन्ना कोटिया बिल्ला टमा तो मैं आवे बिल्ला इधर ले में क्या हुआ बट एक बार में इधर गंग देरुना एक बार में हम Di agen aku, ni tikam bela aku kira tak pernah pakai kita, kata di agen. Mata gal aku dia aku isu apa, mema? Kau kau dia engkau dia ingat ni sah, mema isu mema. Ustaz aku tikam aku dia tahu, faham? Engkau pada kena di agat tak? Jami ir beti lah ini, kau dia kau kul dekian sah mana? Ada satu ekta gahana ini dia tu, mema pahuru gahana. Hei, bayi pahuru gahana ya, mema jami ir tu wadin, ni wadin wadin polu wadin dua bilipar ya, nama. Kotia depan tak kaya huine alah lagi. Kaya ni kotia jamiru pola bata thada kerag ini, ya penting mama hitiya, deh manginno kotia terpain awa hundet. Mata goravanu awa me jamiru alah lagi ni kaya ni mama inne kat kotia terpain awa. E tekka matam awa me pirbas inga villa beri diu. Itu nama beri sah dekak kaya awa. Mata gal negitta, negitno kota mama. Ni dina guru alah lagi ni tamai mana negitte. Negitla mama. Wati pilih beli ni, kelim mana? Wahani tu bici petir mana mangga awa? Jamir meten tarangnya ni kotor. Jamir tu khata keran, be negit ta? Hidupan sehe mana Jamir tu tarangnya ni khati opo mangiya? Generally, leopards avoid humans at all costs. There is even an ancient saying in Sri Lanka that a leopard will get sick for seven days if it encounters a human at close range. There is also a misconception that all leopards are dangerous, creating a fear psychosis among villagers. Educating them about leopards and their behavior is vital for its future conservation. Basically, I think the future of conservation anywhere in the world is getting the people educated as to the environment that they are living in. First of all, we have to get a program going to identify I think some of the leopards in the, especially in the hill country area like Norelia and all those areas, down south and maybe in the Vilpattu regions and all that, uh, it's not too bad at the moment, but the main conflict uh, today is in the hill country. Apart from the lowlands, the hill country is also starting to see a surge in human leopard conflict. Located in the central mountainous region of the country. These lands were the former homes of British colonials. Even though Sri Lanka obtained independence in 1948, vestiges of British influence are seen in the form of lucrative tea plantations, garnering much national income. Currently, Sri Lanka is one of the world's leading exporters of tea. Unfortunately, this region has the highest number of reported leopard attacks. In 2014, a leopard attacked and killed a village woman in this region. Anak ibu ibu nale, enggak mama mad out itu dekiki, mad katu pon agi kiki pagal time le, enggak mama mad kandu bera pon agi, aduk perlu soran giri cuci, aduk perlu segala benda soran agi, po enggak mama puli kerjir cini, aduk perpan agi enggak papa call pani cini. Nai school pon bodoh kuda, yari aduk kudi giri tony kik kudi giri pon ada arke, adu mad adala wakai ladi, perih sirta benda kandu payir de. Enak ke nada nama Mike, enak enggak mau na island nama Mike, beri ayah aku nama Mike nada ke kuar. The leopard that killed the woman in question was none other than Namali. Before the wildlife department officials arrived to translocate Namali, angry villagers beat her so badly that she lost her canine teeth. During recent times, I was really saddened to see that uh, even some schoolgirls and schoolboys have been attacked in the Nuralia area. And that is uh, very frankly, I think, because of the enroachment into the leopard territory, 
and also at the same time i think the environment that leopards have been living in especially in the hill country uh, has been reduced and the leopards are getting urbanized which is happening in india also outside the national parks and i think unless something very drastic is done this is going to be a very serious problem in the future back in the day the highlands had a large percentage of forest cover now with the presence of tea plantations illegal crop cultivation and evasive plants like guinea grass have caused small animals to disappear their absence has forced leopards to rely on different prey and that's where dogs come in to protect their crops farmers use dogs to guard their premises with a depleted natural prey base leopards tend to attack these dogs since farmers are well aware that leopards consume its kill throughout several days they poison the carcass of the dog causing fatal results as a result the collective number of leopards has started to decline minisu godak baya vela inne me kotiya ge prashna nisa eto den me giya satiyet kotiyek kevilla me geval kan tiyena balla warangila tiyenne minisu retawat me hospital ekata yanawat pain yanawat re gamanak yanda godak baya vela inne me kotiya ge prashna nisa pare meda innawa wahane ekata yanda dennet ne e wage me baathi pal jeevat wena minisu kotiya ge prashna ta godak muna dila tiyenawa ගමේ මිනිසෝ තේවතෝල තමයි වැඩ කරලා තේ කරලා තමයි ජීවත් වෙන්නේ තේ අස්සෙත් ඉඳලා මේ කොටේක් පනිනවා ඒ නිසා මේ දිවියක් ප්‍රශ්නේ ප්‍රශ්නයට මේ විසඳුමක් කරලා දෙන්න කියලා තමයි අපි ඉල්ලීමක් කරන්නේ to guard their crops farmers use snares to keep off marauding animals often leopards get caught in these traps and are unable to escape Officials would then have to tranquilize the leopard. Afterwards, they would cut it loose from the snare. Finally, with the help of villagers, the leopard would be translocated. At times, snares can be fatal to a leopard. This animal got entangled. When villagers discovered it hanging from a tree, the leopard was already dead. with a population of over 20 million invading and degrading the leopard's natural habitat a hungry leopard is forced to find food elsewhere naturally they have no option but to venture into human habitations in search of prey resulting in fatal clashes with humans hence man eating leopards may very well be a man made phenomenon the nanny is a busy but peaceful town now leopards are almost non-existent here the terror of the man eater is a distant memory the man still continues the only trade he knows though there is still a chance a leopard might attack his livestock over 10 years old namali's days may very well be numbered in the zoo While leopards in the wild remain protected, their longevity depends on human activity. Hopefully, the human leopard conflict will encourage people to find solutions and lead to human leopard coexistence.